In the past, preparing for your next motorcycle ride meant a stop at the local gas station. But times are changing. EV vehicles are making their way onto the road and becoming more popular, which is why we have two EV motorcycles here today. First, the Zero Motorcycles SRF. This is Zero's premium halo product. It comes with a 14.4 kilowatt capacity battery that Zero says is worthy of 123 miles in combined city and highway. Now, the Livewire. This is Harley Davidson's entry into the EV market. It comes with a 15.5 kilowatt capacity battery that Harley says is worthy of 95 miles in the same mixed conditions. We're here in the mountains of Central California finding out what these two motorcycles are really about and comparing. Can the Harley match the performance of the class leading Zero SRX? All right, we're back from a long, hard day of testing. Alongside <laughs> me is uh, Cycle World testing legend, Don Kinney. And uh, we took these two motorcycles up in the hills and through the oil fields of Central California here. And we really uh, tried to dig into them and see what these things are all about. So starting off, we have to address the Harley. Harley claims that stop and go traffic, they claim that it'll get about 95 miles uh, to a charge. The Zero on the other hand gets about 123. and you know, we found out by the hard way what those numbers really were. We actually uh, ran these motorcycles down to 100% zero charge and until they stopped going. And the Harley got to 71.5 miles before you ran it out of charge. And then the zero, we kept it going for maybe two or three miles further. You noted something, uh, especially on the zero, when it got down to 10%. Yeah, I was, you know, I was watching like, uh, you tend to do on both these bikes. Uh, the dash, mm -hmm. TFT display, gives you lots of info. Uh, one of the more pertinent pieces of info is, uh, you know, charge remaining mm -hmm. and estimated range remaining. You can't help but watch that tick off, and particularly when we were riding in a more sporting environment this afternoon up in the hills. And I was watching, watching it, get down there into uh, you know the teens mm -hmm. and as it hit about 10 percent all of a sudden the performance just fell way off I mean dramatic difference right it, it's like it went from uh, you know full performance sport mode into uh, a limp mode mm -hmm. of some sort and it the acceleration was no longer there um, I know, mean it's just neutering it limit, to help yeah. you get back to yeah. some sort of charging station or to your house. And, right. And so I was that. kind of surprised that that was a full 10% mm -hmm. of the full battery's capacity. Right. But we also yeah. noticed on the Harley, it had no sort of function like that. And it let us go full throttle all the way yeah. to zero. So Bro, that thing hard until a, a turtle, um, you know, icon right. illuminates on the dash and then it's in turtle mode. And that didn't happen until uh, 1% mm -hmm. remaining, I'd say. Which is good and, and bad, yeah. right? Because, you know, you can get to where you need to go, but at the same time, if you're not careful paying and you're attention. not paying attention, yeah. you run the thing straight into zero. Also, I think just the styling of mm -hmm. these bikes are sporty, but they're not, um, you know, a, a super sport, super bike type makeup. And we've seen that, you mm -hmm. know, we've seen some of the early electrics uh, chase that, that right. you know, upper echelons right. of, of sporting performance and you know for one what do these bikes weigh michael the zero back there weighs 502 pounds and the harley actually weighed 554 pounds so you got a 50 pound difference yeah right? yeah and that's that's pretty that's a lot of weight in any motorcycle mm -hmm. that's you know riding on sport rubber and has the suspension components and the brakes and stuff that these right. bikes have you know just the chassis geometry and everything is sporty. So what I really like about both these bikes is, you know, they're street fighters. Mm -hmm. And and that in itself is like a city type sport right. package that yep. makes perfect sense, you know, zipping around, mm -hmm. you know, the mean streets of Los Angeles or, you know, any, any urban area in right. the country. You know, and I think with those urban areas, you're going to get away with being able to ride electric motorcycles because I think that we're starting to see yeah. charging points and charging stations start to pop up, which 
be honest, that's a big talking point for these two different motorcycles too, is that the Zero back there is capable to charge at any level two charging station, which is just about the ones you'd find anywhere in the city. Whereas the Harley here is only capable of level one and level three. Now level one is basically plugging into your home outlet yeah. or level three is a DC fast charger. Those are just starting to pop up around the What's around the advantage town. of this level three? As level three to is level just two. especially to charge it faster. Yeah. So on a level three with the Harley Davidson, it's gonna charge from zero to 100% in about mm -hmm. an hour. Okay. Um, now so if you level plug two it, with the zero. Is about two and a half hours for a oh, full okay. charge. All right. So now if you plug the Harley in to a level two, it's only gonna charge at a level one pace, oh. which is basically an overnight or eight to 10 hours. Yeah, so there's um, no advantage to no advantage. You know, plug it into a level right. two. You might as well find a three prong right. outlet. Exactly. You know. So it's with different. Harley, you know, uh, I understand any any Harley dealership that sells the uh, mm -hmm. live wire, they're required to have level three charging That's station correct. at yep. the dealership, which is part of the customer's purchase experience it's, a, it's yeah. a, a perk to have what free access to that charging right. for what the first year is it i believe you get there's some sort of allotment there of mm -hmm. time and charge okay. um, but that's right the harley dealerships they have fast chargers on uh -huh. site ready to go uh -huh. so jumping back to it we were out on the twisties yeah. and we really kind of dove into the performance of these motorcycles and they were very sporty like you say and had a lot of good handling characteristics yeah and, yeah, it's kind of interesting because, you know, just the actual weight on paper. Mm -hmm. And so picking the Harley up off the side stand, mm -hmm. it feel, you feel a lot of that. Totally. Weight. I think maybe it leans a little further on yeah. the side stand. But anyhow, picking it up, it feels more than, let's say, 50 pounds heavier mm -hmm. than the Zero to me. Even but, just pushing it, like but, you said. But then the amazing thing, once you get either one of these bikes rolling. They that, carry their weight really carry, well. Yeah. Really? And I think that, you know, that 50 pounds, you feel it a little bit between it and the zero, mm -hmm. actually out on the open road, maybe in side to side transitions, but it's not noticeable and it's not, you know, it doesn't make you break a sweat to get it up and over no, to the other side. And, they're both quite agile, I'd say. Right. But the Harley, what we talked about today is it's so much more stable. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, part of the feeling is different from mm -hmm you know from like an inline four mm -hmm. let's say you have a lot of you know inertia within the powertrain itself yep. that's creating some of that that stability but also you know maybe a little bit of a heavy handling feel in some some bikes right not so much in others it's almost like on these things you feel like you're almost like on a bicycle at speed mm -hmm. right right and a little bit you know a little uh, nervousness you give, yeah you give up some of that inherent mm -hmm. stability uh, I noticed it more so on the Zero. It's it's a little touchier. You have to be you know smooth with input to not right. influence. Yeah, I noticed the same thing. I felt like once you got the Zero on the side of the tire and you were very uh, cognizant of how much input you were putting into the motorcycle, it was mm -hmm. really good. But if you kind of got in and hit a bump or you asked too much of the throttle or gave it some brake input, all of a sudden it became nervous. Yeah. Harley, on the other hand it felt like a traditional motorcycle and you got it in and turned the bike and yeah. maybe it didn't turn quite as quick and mm -hmm. maybe that's part of the, you know, the weight discrepancy. Mm -hmm. But overall, it was a really neutrally handling yeah. motorcycle. It seemed like it was a bike that was easier to, to have confidence in totally. it, you know, quickly. It takes a little more, uh, you know, time to get familiar mm -hmm. and at ease, I, I believe, on the Zero. 100%. And, uh, Couple little things yeah. we picked up on the foot pegs, being a little mm -hmm. slippery on the yeah, Zero. Yeah, the Zero, yep. You know, um, Harley's got, you know, eh, the rubber's got to help. And the ergonomics um, with mm -hmm. the Zero too is is a little bit sportier, a little yeah. bit more compact. I think we both agreed that the Harley was just slightly more relaxed and more comfortable at day's end. Uh -huh. And while we were up on the twisties, we got a little experience of what it felt like to turn the throttle. Oh yeah. Uh, Torque, torque on tap is for what both it is. of them. Yeah, for both absolutely. of them. Absolutely. Um, prior to the actual testing, we actually took these to the airstrip and we got some oh, yeah. performance numbers on them. The Harley Davidson ran a 11.54 at 110 miles an hour, uh, quarter mile, and then the Zero was actually an 11.83 at 116 miles an oh, hour, so slightly higher slower, trap speed. but higher trap speed. Ah. You know, and, and so that's kind of su surprising considering the Harley's, you know 
pack in a little more weight mm -hmm. and accelerate that weight. Just my hunch would be maybe a, a difference in, in overall gear. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, maybe the Harley's geared a little shorter, helps that acceleration. Right, gets it going. Because didn't it have a, a quicker zero to 30, zero to 60 It did have time? a zero, uh, zero to 30 and zero to 60 was both faster. Uh -huh. It was uh, 3.0, I think, on the on the Harley Davidson, and I want to say it was 3.7 yeah. on the zero SRF. Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty it's amazing. Quite, that's significant. And you know it's, uh, it's repeatable too. Mm -hmm. And you've, you've tested a lot of bikes like myself at the drag strip and launching either of these off the line, it's simple as... Right, there's no clutch work, give it there's stick, no gears. And it just, and it's repeatable. Yeah. You know, to get a, a 0 to 60 to 3.0 mm -hmm. on a typical naked sport bike, you know, maybe they're right. you're a little more wheelie prone because you're trying to work the clutch, get the revs up and, right. you know, get it off the line. I have to say though, that's half the fun. You know, there's right. nothing, if, if it's easy, it's fun, right. but the satisfaction really you know, comes with it, with achievement right. you know, from a riding standpoint. Right. It's impressive. Yeah. The, the performance itself is impressive, yeah. right? But exactly right. The riding experience, you know, there are some things that these motorcycles lack. The noise, the clutch work, yeah. the, all the inputs that go into it. But at the same time, that's kind of what makes it cool. You can haul butt everywhere and not really draw a whole lot of attention and yeah, you know, just Sneak. get around. Yep. It's quite a different uh, experience being on a Harley that you're just listening to the wind whistle yep. and a little bit of a you know, powertrain whine. You know, right, you know, it's not really what yeah. you expect from a Harley. Uh -huh. But I think what we talked about too with the fit and finish, this is what you do expect from Harley. Yeah, actually, they, they really nailed it in that regard, and I think that's one of the, the factors that stands out between these two bikes. It's just, uh, I know the, the Harley's more expensive, mm -hmm. so you would... 29799 Okay. And then this one was 21495 Uh-huh. So. so you would you would absolutely expect nothing but, you know, premium, right. you know, quality materials and workmanship on a $30,000 right. purchase. But it really shows, you know, I was kind of poking around and looking at every little aspect and some of the individual components. I feel like the fit and finish on the Harley, everything feels like it has its place. Mm -hmm. It feels like there's a lot of top shelf components on there and there are. Yeah. The Zero, you know, I think that there could be a couple little details here and there that could really just elevate the whole experience of the, of the motorcycle that much further. And that color on the Zero is quite unique. Yeah. You kind of took a shine to it. Right. Yeah. No, I like yeah. it. I think it's, uh, like you said, it's unique, it's modern. Um, both these bikes are very modern. All right, Don, we're all wrapped up. Day yeah. one of testing is in the books. <laughs> Harley Davidson kind of stole the show today. Fit and finish, yeah. the performance out on the twisties. Even if the Zero is maybe a little bit more utilitarian, easier to use, charge. Yeah, and you know it's hard to decide this in a in a single day out here in the in the wild. So, uh, what do you say we uh, you know recharge our batteries and get a fresh start in the morning? Let's do it. Let's let these things charge, and we'll get back to it. All right. Awesome. So, zero. It's a good motorcycle. I think that it could use some refinement. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, Harley Davidson's been building bikes for a while, right? Mm-hmm. So I would expect nothing less from Harley than, you know, the most refined electric EV bike I've ridden to date. Right, it's a very yeah. natural feeling motorcycle on the wrist, on the top, on the side of the tire, kind of getting sporty with it. It feels like it belongs on the road and it feels like it's it's just riding really yeah. well. Super composed and just, at, you know, at ease in the corner, at, at decent clip. The Zero, if you, if you get it over on the side of the tire and you, you hit a depression mm -hmm. or a bump or anything like that or have to give it sudden input, it's it's prone to be a bit nervous and right. get upset by that. You right. know? On this last stretch with super smooth pavement, I was really enjoying it. Yep. Yeah. It's so you know, it it likes it likes a carpet ride. That's right, that's right. So the Harley Davidson, very natural like we say, very smooth, just very confident on the side of the tire. Um, you know, it does struggle with being level three, having the oh, level the three charging, charger, yeah. uh -huh. which what you just well, said. Well, I understand if, if you have access to a level three charging station, then you're gonna have less downtime and be out there riding the live wire right. more than a bike that, that doesn't have level three. Right. You know, it has level two here, takes a little longer to charge, but 
There's right. a lot more level two infrastructure right now out there. Exactly. And so, uh, you know, but but level three, I, I understand it's growing, you know, by the month, let's it, say. It's, it's coming. So yeah. that being said, I think that we have to come to a conclusion that we'd be taking the live wire. Yeah, you know, as, as the flagship premier uh, EV motorcycle at this point in time, I would be going with the live wire. All right, guys, there you have it. The Harley Davidson live wire is the winner of this comparison. If you liked the video, be sure to like, follow, subscribe, head over to cycleworld.com, have a read of the full in-depth story, and we'll see you next time.